Hi, in April I'm starting the bullet journal experiment. A bullet journal is a place to organize and track your to-dos, but I also want mine to help me keep my memories and be my creative diary, all in one place. So mine is going to be a bit different. Here, the materials I'm going to use, but guys, I'm going to list and describe everything below this video. About the format, choose the one that fits your needs. I like a square that is in between A4 and A5. The spiral binding is great for me because I like to paste things into my notebook, so spirals give it the space it needs. I'm going to protect my space and then start cutting. I measure, without the spirals, the surface of my cover. I need four pieces of cover. I'm going to do three of my covers in this textured material with holes. So I cut exactly three times the same cover. My first cover is going to be cut in this fabulous mirrored and textured fabric that is so soft on the inside that on the correct face it's also softer when you touch it. Same dimensions as the other three covers. Here are all my covers. I'm gluing the first one with a ton of glue because it's heavy onto my notebook. It fits well. Press and wait. For the inside, since my material has holes in it, I can't use glue. I'm going to use double-sided tape instead. I position that carefully, also on the back cover and on the third cover. Here on the inside, I want the same thing as some Moleskine notebooks. I want an envelope so that I can gather things I collect before I paste them onto my notebook. It's a bit too high for my notebook, so I'm going to fold it a bit smaller and make it stable with this silver tape. Then I'm gluing it onto my page. I like that it's translucent, so I can see what I have inside my envelope. That's it for the book so far. The covers are done. Now I need to think about a way to bind and close it. I bought different sizes and colors of ribbon, so I'm going to mix two different ones and play around until I find a closure that I like. I want to tie it somehow. Those two pretty ribbons are a bit too perfect for me, so I have to break perfection by adding raw hemp to the mix. That's a hairy texture, I like it. Then I'm gonna add another one of that green satin ribbons, because I can't really see it well enough right now. Once I'm done with the outside, I'm gonna take care of the inside of my book. I leave the first page free, for the index. The second one will be my cover page, that's what I'm going to do last. And on the third page, I start. I'm using a ton of different media, and some are new to me, so I test everything before using it in my notebook. I'd like to start my book with some inspirational things, so I'm going to start with the part that keeps memories in one place, instead of starting with the to-dos right away. I want my first page to be about books. I read, I received, I gave, I liked about books. Here I decorate just the way I feel about it, giving it free space, but a little bit of frame. While that water paint is drying, I can do the second page. This is also an inspirational page and it's going to be about movies, I see. Here I'm decorating with a different texture. It can be anything you like, really. On the third page, I want to remember the cultural events and the exhibitions I've been to. So that can be pictures, entrance tickets, thoughts, drawings about it. And I'm going to frame that in a colorful, joyful yellow. Next page is a very concrete one. It's about the goals I want to set myself for the month. They can't be too many, so I have six space. That's a maximum. I don't think you can make any more than six goals come true within one month. On the same double page, I want to track my sport activities. Kind of mark with a bar every time I went to the gym or something and be happy about it afterwards. That's motivating, I think. Below, I keep a free space for ideas. Some call it brain dumping. I don't like the word. I'd rather say something motivating like random, but great ideas. <laughs> then I tackle my weekly pages. 
Here I want the same structure every week. So I always have Monday in the top left corner and Sunday in the bottom right corner. I also keep a space for my little notes. I highlight the days in blue, but I leave the rest of the space free because it's going to be filled with text anyways. I don't want it to become too heavy. Then I do the other weeks exactly the same way. April is going to have five weeks. The last page is the start of my creative diary. It's going to be free space for me to draw, think, explore, whatever I like. That's why I can't do the next month yet. I don't know how many pages I'm going to need. Once I'm done with all my pages, I can do the index. That's the thing I would do last because I need to think about it beforehand. It's going to be the year 2017. That's for sure. So I make it a nice big title. Then I want to mark which colors I'm using each month. So when I have several months, I'll have a nice color palette on this page. Then I need two boxes, one for the to-dos, the done and the moved items. And I have to respect this color code to keep organized. Then I have things that I do for my company, for YouTube or private stuff. I use different colors here. So far, my bullet journal looks like this. You can see the order of the pages again, if it helps you organize your own journal. Again, those three pages will be for my diary. And at the end, I have my envelope and my back cover. I like that every time I close it, I can imagine a new way of binding it together. Give this video a thumb up if you found it inspiring. And if you subscribe to my channel, you'll see this journal filled in a month from now. I see you soon for a new video. I upload every Wednesday and Sunday. Take care, guys. Bye.